All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with a quick report. I just finished editing and uploading the practice squad update video and then the Benadric McKinney versus KJ Wright video. Just as I'm about to relax and start working on some rookie film sessions and things like that, the Washington football team goes and announces all of the new jersey number updates. Because there's been a lot of changes to jerseys on this team. I mean, remember Peyton Barber and Benjamin St. Juice were both wearing number 25. And I brought it to people's attention like, hey man, that's not gonna be able to stay for long. Somebody's gonna have to change jerseys or somebody's just not gonna make the team. Peyton Barber ended up not making the team, but there's a lot of jersey number changes on top of that. I'm gonna break all of that down. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, also, make sure you check out the rest of the channel. All of my videos are organized in playlists. I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos. And then, like I keep telling y'all, these next two weeks are going to be really quiet for the Burgundy and Gold. They're not letting us know anything about what's going on in training camp other than injury updates. That's really about it. But the Street Scores channel is about to be giving y'all endless content. As you can see today, I'm uploading my third video. So get ready for a lot of content, especially my channel members. Y'all are going to get a lot of exclusive stuff that non-channel members won't even know exists. So stay tuned, man. Let's get it. All right, so as you see on the screen, for any of y'all that may not already know, the NFL has a new jersey number rule. It used to be very limited, now they opened it up. As far as quarterbacks, kickers, and punters, there's been no change. They can wear any number between one through 19, but now the running backs go from being able to only wear 20 through 49, now they can wear one through 49 and 80 to 89. A running back in 80 to 89 is gonna be a little weird, but hey, we'll see. Things are about to really look like college now. Wide receivers used to only be able to wear 10 through 19 and 80 through 89. Now, just like the running backs, they're one through 49 and 80 through 89. A wide receiver anywhere in the 40s is gonna be a little weird. 30s as well, but it's just something we're gonna have to get used to if somebody chooses to do that for some reason. Tight ends used to only be able to do 40 through 49 and 80 through 89. Now they can do one through 49 and 88 and 89. It's interesting, they're more limited in the 80s, but one through 49, they just opened all of that up. Then offensive linemen are still only allowed to wear 50 through 79. Defensive linemen, no change as well. They can wear 50 through 79 and 90 through 99 per usual. Linebackers could only wear 40 through 59 and 90 through 99 last year and many years before that, but now they can wear one through 59 in addition to 90 through 99. And defensive backs went from only being able to wear 20 through 49 to one to 49. So it's gonna be a lot of interesting number combinations. You've already seen that Jalen Ramsey changed his number. A lot of guys are changing their numbers. I think for the most part, most guys are just going back to the old college number that they had that wasn't allowed in the NFL rules previously to this year. Now that they're able to get their old college number that they used to love back, that's why they're getting those numbers. And just to let you know, college has readopted the number double zero, but it's still off limits in the NFL. So the NFL didn't go that far. There's still a slight difference between college and NFL. And now let's get to our jersey changes. Remember number 13? That used to be Kelvin Harmon. Now Adam Humphreys took over the number 13. He's projected to be our starting slot receiver. He's the only guy that has any prior rapport with Ryan Fitzpatrick before this offseason. So expect to hear the number 13 call quite a bit. Also remember Jimmy Moreland, who we just let go, more than likely not bring him back. I'm pretty sure another team is gonna scoop him up before we even get the chance to. He used to wear number 20. Now that's Bobby McCain's number, our projected starting free safety. Now, because we have Cameron Curl and Landon Collins, they're both strong safeties. We want them on the field as much as possible, but it's not like Bobby McCain is gonna be on the field all of the time and then Landon Collins and Cameron Curl are gonna switch in and out. That may happen at times, but for the most part, it's gonna be Cameron Curl and Landon Collins getting the most snaps out of the safety group. But Bobby McCain technically is your starting free safety if we have a starting free safety. Then remember Alex Smith, 2018 through 2020, he wore that number 11. That's Cam Sims number now. 
Cam Sims used to wear number 89. He went ahead and made that switch to 11. Now with those new wide receiver rules. Danny Johnson, backup corner with some returnability as well. He's on the practice squad. But Jared Patterson, our one-two punch with Antonio Gibson, and potentially one of our better kick returners, will take over that number 32. He wore number 26 at Buffalo last year in college, but he's moving to 32 here. Remember Steven Sims? He used to be number 15. We had a lot of high hopes for him. He just went out there and laid an egg last year. Didn't do enough to make up for it this year. Got cut pretty early too. He got picked up by the Buffalo Bills, but then when the 53-man roster started to come out, he got cut from the Bills as well, so he's a free agent. But Dax Milne, our future franchise slot guy, will take over that number 15. And Milne wore several numbers in college, but 15 was never one of them. So I'm not exactly sure why he chose number 15 now. Maybe he's like, I'm going to show y'all what 15 should have done last year and going forward. I don't know. And then remember John Potter, our kicker from 2013. He was the last person to wear number one. DeAndre Carter will take that number over for the burgundy and gold this year and moving forward. And it's interesting because, again, like a lot of players, DeAndre Carter never wore number one for any other team in the NFL, but suddenly he wants to wear it here. So interesting. And then certain guys on the practice squad, they got demoted to the practice squad. So their number was up for grabs. Antonio Gandy Golden is now moving to 18. He got his 11 taken from Cam Sims. Peyton Barber's moving to 38. Remember, he shared the same number as Benjamin St. Juice, so technically he got his number taken by Benjamin St. Juice. And Danny Johnson, who got his number taken by Jared Patterson, will now be number 36. And that's it for the jersey number updates. But now, while I'm talking to y'all, a big update just came out. Derek Forrest was placed on IR after the 4 p.m. deadline today, and he's eligible to return after the first three games. So if healthy, he can be back for the Falcons. But with that move of putting Derek Forrest with his hamstring injury to IR, we have officially signed David Mayo to the official 53-man roster, which means we still only have 15 of 16 practice squad spots filled up. Maybe if they go and get a Bernardrick McKinney, who I just did a whole video breaking down whether we should get him or KJ Wright, if we go and get one of those guys, then maybe you move David Mayo to the practice squad, that 16th spot. But as of right now, we've added David Mayo to the official 53-man roster. We finally have five linebackers. I think a lot of teams in the NFL, I'm pretty sure they probably have like six or something. And we only had four. But now we have five. Again, like I said with David Mayo, like I've been saying in videos and live streams, he's a certified run stopper. He's probably our best run stopper on the team right now out of the linebacker group but he's such a liability and coverage that's why you can afford to lose him the nfl is moving into the future it's a pass happy lead that's why on one side you need a franchise quarterback to really have a chance of winning super bowls in this nfl but on the other side you need defensive players that can cover especially your linebackers especially even though we run a 4-3 base we're in sub packages so much with nickel dime we're trying out this 5-2-4 defense if you're the type of guy just like me that wants to see Cameron curl landon collins and bobby mccain on the field at the same time you can only run two linebackers if you're the type of guy like me as well that wants to see benjamin st juice kendall fuller and william jackson on the field at the same time you're only able to have two linebackers out there on the field so expect us to have a lot of sub packages even though we're technically a base 4-3 defense we will be running a lot of defensive packages to where we only have two linebackers on the field at the same time and David Mayo is a liability and coverage so I'm pretty sure first of all he's a really good special teams player not to the level of a Trey Apke but Tressway has said that even with his experiences with the Burgundy and Gold they've had the game plan for David Mayo while he's been on other teams when we played those other teams as far as special teams go so he may not be Trey Apke but he's still to the level that special teams coordinators have to circle his name and be like we got to figure out how to stop him when we play the Burgundy and Gold but on the defensive side of the ball again he's just a certified run stopper a big liability and coverage but if it's third and one fourth and one maybe some goal line you bring them in on obvious running plays if there's even a chance that a team might throw the ball you do not want them on the field second and four third and four whatever you only bring them out there on fourth and inches and goal line honestly but i understand the move Derek forrest is very raw he's a really good special teams player but since he even has like the slightest injury it's just smart to go ahead and put him on ir since he's as raw as he is give him more time to develop and that gives you a roster spot to bring a david mayo onto the team chestnut checkers y'all also very random but i figured i'd update y'all on this nate caxer is finally back in practice that's our special teams coordinator 
he's been out due to COVID-19 protocols. And Curtis Samuel as well was stretching at the start of practice today. But like I've been telling y'all, media access is cut off from now on. They're preparing for the Chargers. So we will no longer get those daily updates of these are the formations we're running. These are the players that look good. Literally all we're getting is injury updates all the way up to the Chargers game. Maybe some roster moves, but all of those daily updates of Dax Milne ran a great route and had a great catch. Ryan Fitzpatrick threw an interception. All of that is done. Practice is closed to the media after 15 minutes. And literally within that 15 minutes, all you really see is players come onto the field, start stretching, start running. You get no information. After that, everybody gets kicked out if you're not a coach or a player. And of course, front office. I mean, if Jason Wright wants to pull up for any reason, Marty Herney, Martin Mayhew, but you get what I'm saying though. No more media access, no more outside access, and definitely no fans. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. As always, man, I appreciate all of the support big time. Big shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel. A special shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now, man. I really appreciate y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I'm going to keep y'all updated on everything that's going on, breaking in gold. I'm out.